I'm doing today. So we have the all new 2022 Infinity QX55 is finally here. And it may be a little bit of a disappointment to some of you guys because it may not be what you're thinking. So Infinity has taken their popular QX50 crossover. Well, I wouldn't say super popular, but it's doing um, a little bit okay for them finally after some so slow sales originally. But their QX50 crossover has been turned into a crossover coupe now. So it's going to be competing against things like the BMW X4, the Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe, and if the Audi Q5 Sportback comes to the United States, they'll compete against that too. Um, this is actually the only um, coupe crossover from Japan right now in the luxury segment. Um, so that's a, an interesting fact they did point out. Um, and another thing is they wanted to make it sporty. So they kind of went more sporty on the looks. So they derived, they, they say that they derived the looks from the old Infinity uh, FX. Now, if you remember the FX, the FX was a rear wheel drive based, um, kind of sp actually sporty SUV. It came with the, um, the QB6, it had a V8 at one point. It was really cool and it evolved into the QX75 before they killed it off a few years ago. Um, there was also the EX, which was a smaller crossover. I wouldn't really call that a coupe though. Um, that was also rear wheel drive. Um, so the QX55, what's so cool about it? Well, the main, main focus is the design. So Infinity's designer, um, Afonso Albeza, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I don't want to be saying it wrong, but he, um, they, they were talking about making it classy, sleek, and sporty at the same time to kind of give it like your sportier everyday driving um, appearance and feel. So the standard, it gets things like 20 inch wheels. Um, again, that sloping roof line. And some interesting things they point out are those piano key, um, tail lights in the back which is a new infinity of design cue that's going to be debuting on the new qx60 suv um it's like 45 separate leds i think in the back part of there and well it, and there's not that much stuff that's really different than compared to the qx50 um, which is interesting um other than that the front end is a little bit sportier so I, I'm going to have some photos over here if you guys can see. So if you look at the front end, they kind of derived it a bit more from the Q60 Coupe rather than the QX50, with kind of like the grille has like a little opening underneath. Um, there's like bigger, blacker um, air vents on the side and a little bit wider to give it that contrast and look. And that's pretty much it again. Um, it's not that much stuff that's different compared to the QX50. And hopping in over into the interior and another disappointment it's the same dated looking interior that's in the qx50 right now um nothing too impressive here now infinity is telling us that the interior does have wireless apple carplay but um android auto is still wired only i'm not sure why that is and of course you do have those dual screens so the top screen is usually what you're going to have for like your maps or apple carplay or android auto and the bottom screen is where the infotainment um infinity's real system is so you can have like all your um settings and stuff that goes through there um that of course they are faster and a little bit more higher performing than they used to be when they came out back in 2014. thankfully the qx60 the new qx60 is coming out very soon it's been spied a lot here's the spied interior completely new interior kind of looks like a ripoff of a genesis or a lincoln product but thankfully so it looks like a normal touchscreen. The materials look better. I think that's a digital dash hiding under there. So finally, there's a new interior. But as of right now, we're dealing with this. Um, other things, they highlighting things like up to 16 speakers with a Bose audio system and an upgraded um, package. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, another disappointing thing is if you're hoping for a performance car, please go to Mercedes or BMW or even Audi actually as this is the same powertrain that's in the QX50. It's not a bad powertrain, but it's not um, a higher performance. It is a front wheel drive based crossover still. Um, it does have all wheel drive and only 50% of the power can go to the rear wheels when needed. And it is powered by the two liter um, turbocharged Vero compression turbo, um, again, turbo engine that's spreading across Nissan Infiniti's lineup. In this case, it makes the same 268 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque that's found in the QX50. Um, and unfortunately, it is paired to a CBT. So 
yeah, if you guys don't like CBTs, don't buy it. Um, but that's what we have right now. Um, it's kind of unfortunate that, yeah, it's another crossover coup. I'm sure it's going to sell for them, for the normal people that don't really care about all this stuff. But if you remember on the Infinities of the past, they were kind of fun to drive, sporty. They looked pretty cool. This doesn't look bad, but it looks a little bulbous. Um, yeah, I, I, I wish it, it could have been better. I wish they took a little bit more time, put that new interior in it, maybe somehow figured out to put their new 9-speed gearbox in, which I, hopefully is coming in the QX60. And there's been a lot of rumors about that. Um, I think that would have made it a much more enticing buy for a lot of people there's no word on pricing as of just yet um we're gonna have to wait for that they said it's gonna be coming out in the spring so spring 2021 in the us and canada and other key markets and it's going to be only coming in three trims so i'm guessing that it's going to be starting off a little bit higher than um like a qx uh 50 would be since all the um, qx 55 models get um 20 inch wheels because they want to keep the design a bit more cohesive um, but yeah, that's all we really have for it right now. There's a whole bunch of pictures and B-roll going on over there, but you know, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. It's just a quick look and first impression on it. Again, I don't think it's bad. It's just not for 2021. It could have been a lot better. And we know that they are having better stuff come out. And the fact that they didn't put it into this, it's a little bit disappointing. And again, thank you guys for watching. Um, make sure to follow us on Instagram for more news and updates. And stay tuned for more.